This week marks the start of a trial in Brooklyn that's been in the works since 2013. It stems from a dispute over the beloved Queen structure called Five Points. For decades, it was covered in graffiti and become a destination for art lovers. But then the owner whitewashed the walls and tore it down. 21 artists who had work in the building are now suing with a unique legal argument. They say their art, even though it was on a building and not a canvas, should have been protected by law. Criminal defense attorney Doug Burns joins me now on set to break this down. So explain this to us. What's the significance of this five points case? It's a very, very interesting case, and here's why. Normally, you have the owner of the building, and he owns the art. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to assume that. And he says, well, I'm going to tear this down, uh, and I'm going to put in some new condominium units. So the point is, most people say, well, there's nothing to talk about. But there was a statute put in mm -hmm. in 1990, the uh, Visual Artists' Rights Act, popularly referred to as VARA, VARA. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting because it creates sort of like a moral argument. It says that if the works are of recognized stature, that's the key test that the judge, Judge Block, is going to be working with, then the artists have some rights, notwithstanding that they no longer own the art. So it's really mm -hmm. interesting. Now, a little quick context. A couple of years ago, the artists sued to prevent and join the building being destroyed, and the judge denied that. So now the point is, sadly, the artworks are gone, and what they're suing for is monetary damages. So from the artist's standpoint, to say that this is graffiti art and should be protected by the law, what do they need to show? Well, that's an excellent point. Sorry, because I didn't focus on that, because then you get into the argument about, well, wait a minute, is this graffiti, or do you give it a uh, loftier status? That's another component of, component of this, excuse me, because a lot of times people say, well, is graffiti really art? Mm -hmm. So it tracks into the earlier standard that we talked about, which is, you know, the recognized stature. The judge is going to have to decide whether graffiti art, um, you know, rises to the level of that type of stature in the analysis. Mm -hmm. And that's really the tough part for the judge, uh, because in the earlier decision, he sort of touched on it, but he left it open that I'm going to revisit it. And that's why, by the way, they brought this second case for the monetary damages. So the building owners, yes. what's their argument in this case? Well, their argument is is just, it's funny, it's like the ping pong or tennis just volleying back what I just said, which mm -hmm. is A, this is not recognized stature. Mm -hmm. B, graffiti art doesn't rise uh, to the level of conventionality uh, so that it would be recognized under the statute. And then C, the other part of it is, you know, we own the building, we own the art, um, and you have no rights. One other thing I forgot I do want to point out is that the plaintiffs are saying mm -hmm. that they were entitled to 90 days notice originally uh -huh. uh, before anything was destroyed. That's another sort of technical aspect of the case. Mm. What do you th how do you think the judge will rule on this? Is there a way of gauging that? Well, it's hard. I have to kind of look into the legal crystal ball, yeah. no, which I do. Um, and joking aside, no, I think, uh, I think they have a pretty good case uh, for the recovery of some type of damages. I do. I mean, you these do. This is pretty significant um, you know, artwork of long standing at this building. But some people look at this and say this is crazy. They don't own the building, so why should they get anything? No, you're right. I mean, that's the first blush argument, which is, well, wait a minute. The owner of the building owns the art. Case closed, nothing to talk about. But again, this statute, which is a little bit legally controversial because it puts together intellectual property. And I read one law review article, I glanced at it, talking about moral, right, mm. to the art. That's kind of interesting. But that doesn't usually equate to legal. So back to your point. It's a hard hurdle to overcome, which is they own the building, they can do what they want with it, but the goodwill over time, all of the effort, yeah. you know, 20 years of paintings, I think Judge Block, who I happen to know, I tried a case in front of him, you know, I practice in federal court, um, I think he's going to be pretty open-minded in terms of the way he ultimately mm -hmm. comes out on it. Do you think this case sets a precedent? I think it does, um, because there have been very few cases, actually, under that 1990 law of VARA, um, and, and I think Judge Block himself had said in the context of the earlier injunction mm -hmm. litigation, he said this really is a novel area. And some of the articles I was looking at pointed that out as well. Mm -hmm. It's really a new ground that may be broken. And that's why I mm -hmm. find the case so interesting. It is a fascinating case. Mm -hmm. Doug Burns, thank you so much for joining us, My Doug. My pleasure.